Ferry had talked about. <laughs> Although I guess technically a lot of the stuff I talk about is just regurgitating stuff that Mike Ferry talked about, but what are you going to do? <laughs> I, I said that to uh, Tony Smith one time used a, a line that I had, I had used and uh, he goes, he came up to me and he goes, I stole one of your lines. And I said, okay. I said, well, that's fair. I mean, I've stolen, I don't know, few of yours. And he just joked. He said, that's kind of just what we do. We just steal from each other and just go from there. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how it works. So, you know, a lot of stuff that I say is I heard from Mike or Tony or Ron or somebody stuff that they say they might've heard from Neil or myself, or, you know, it's just, it's all one big, happy family of chaotic coaches and trainers and trying to make the world a better place. Are we succeeding? No, no wonder this Sellers Day tell us we all sound alike. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. it. It is the funniest thing. We and we do joke about that, especially like with Tony, Ron, and and myself. And you know, because we do the tra we do training classes as well. And it's just like, oh yeah, I heard you say this, so I use that. And I heard you say this, so I use that. And it's funny. All right. So what I want to talk about today. First of all, I want to thank everyone for being here because I, I got to remind you, you know, we're now post Thanksgiving and it's going to continue to get harder and harder and harder to find agents actually working. You know, and Neil made a really good point this morning is that most agents have already slowed their business down. Some of them really good producers. Melinda talked about this last week. She's in a mastermind with like the top. 15 agents in the city of Long Beach. And uh, she was on a call with them a week or two ago. And uh, half of them were saying that they've pretty much already mailed it in for the year. These are big, big producers. So you're going to have pretty much the entire month of December where your competition is going to be really bleak. But then what happens is that you know, then the first week of January, everyone goes, well, you know what, I'm, I, it's New Year's, I'm going to take that time off. Second week in January, all right, let's kind of start getting back into it. The third week, they fill out a business plan. The fourth week of January, maybe is when they start going. So you really have almost a two-month window where if you just said, I'm putting my head to the ground and I'm going for it. You kind of have a two month window where your competition is really, really low. Now, if you have scheduled time off, take it off. I'm not telling you to cancel the vacations. Okay. If you're going skiing in December for a weekend somewhere, go. Although, I mean, skiing in general, I wouldn't go anyways, but you know, that's, that's more of a Robert Hertel thing than <laughs> something else. But go on your vacations. But man, when on those scheduled days you're working, Get into it. So I'm glad that you all are here. This is fantastic. So here's what I want to talk about today. Mike had talked about a couple of weeks ago some lessons he's learned from millionaires. Now, what was neat about this is that he didn't specify if it was specific to real estate millionaires or just millionaires in general, because anyone that's been around Mike for 30 seconds knows that he knows more than just real estate millionaires. I mean, this is a guy who nonchalantly is like, oh, yeah, I've been on Andrea Bocelli's boat. We'll just hang out. And it's like, oh, OK. You know, so it, it's a mindset of just millionaires in general. But obviously, a lot of them are going to be based in in real estate. And I went through this list and I found some really, really unique thoughts and ideas. And, and so I want to go through as much of this list as we can. We probably won't get through all of the, the thoughts that he put in there and then kind of put my own little twist on some, some things in terms of real estate. Maybe we'll, we'll cover this over the next two weeks. But these were 25 separate ideas that he came up with that are very common amongst millionaires that he knows in any sort of facet of life. Now, here's the question is does everybody here want to make more money yes okay if yes. you're if you're not a millionaire do you want to be a millionaire if you're a millionaire would you like would you be okay being a multi-millionaire okay just want to make sure okay because we can talk about other stuff okay as neil 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 schwartz's favorite line if you don't want to talk about that we could talk about how to do, do a do do a deal every now and then 
which nobody seems to ever want to talk about. Okay, so let's dive through this list. Let's dive through this list. Commonalities, commonalities in the mindset of millionaires. Now, he didn't say if these were written in any particular order of importance, so we're just going to go down the list as they're written. Number one is this. Millionaires understand that wealth building takes time. Millionaires understand that wealth building takes time. a typically bare minimum five to 10 years, minimum five to 10 years from the day you make the decision that you want to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire before you get to that point, minimum five to 10 years. <clears throat> now, for some people, it's a lot longer. From the time you make a decision or from the time you take actual first Well, action? he wrote it down from the time you make a decision. So okay. it could be, yeah, from the time you take action, but he wrote it down from the time you make a decision. But it takes time. It takes time to build wealth. As, as Mike talked about on stage a couple, I forget which event it was at, but he said, you know, overnight, he was talking about overnight success. He says, well, in my life, I've read 10,000 books. I've made about 20,000 coaching calls. I've done about 5,000 lectures. And boy, that was one hell of a night. You know, you know, making the joke that it takes time. And he tells the story about his first, you know, his very first superstar retreat that he did. He lost money on that event, you know. But he wanted to do it. He, he had a big vision, but it's like, I, I, this is going to take time. You know, we we hear from superstar real estate agents all the time. I mean, Bernie Gallerini talked about when he first started his numbers, it was taking him almost 800 contacts to get a listing. You know, now you think of Bernie Gallerini now and you're like, the guy's got a team that's going to, he's going to make $7 million this year. But it, it, when he started, it took him 800 contacts to get a listing. So it was taking him a long time time. We've had a number of other different people that talk about that same thing. Wealth building takes time. It's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen in the next year. It's those little things that you have to do. But what I wrote down underneath this point, this is where you have to think big. This is where thinking big comes into play. I want to build wealth. This is how much money I want. And I understand that it's not going to happen today. So I have to think big and think about the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, however long it takes. I mean, so what if it takes you 30, 40 years? You're going, if you're going to be alive, you might as well keep going for it. You know, didn't Colonel Sanders start KFC when he was like 65 or something like that? You know what I mean? You keep going for it. All right, number two, millionaires understand timing and the type of industry you are in is critical to business success. Millionaires understand timing and the type of industry you are in is critical to business success. We must do the right thing at the right time. It's about timing. So what I wrote down here underneath number two is that is the ability and the willingness, ability and the willingness to adapt. Exactly what Matab and I were talking about, about the pre-listing package. Can willingness to adapt. Point again, please? Yep, no problem. It is, the point says, millionaires understand timing and the type of industry you are in is critical to business success. We must do the right thing at the right time. So what I wrote down underneath that is the ability and willingness to adapt. Because everybody has the ability to adapt. Not everybody's willing to adapt. And this is what we were talking about with the pre-listing package. Well, I've had, I've got this 18 point plan of action and, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to adapt. Uh, you know, well, the timing in the industry we're in right now is kind of forcing you to adapt because so many people are adding so many services. I don't want to learn technology. Well, you know what? I understand technology can be a downer, but in 2022, you got to be able to utilize some of this technology. Okay. It, it's all about timing. We just talked about timing right now. Most agents are are out of the business for the next two months. This should be the time when you should do ultimate prospecting days every week. 
you should be contacting your database more than you've ever done it. You should be building your database more. Timing in our business is, is working when other people aren't. That's why a lot of people, Mark and Al, who are the highest producers in the company, have been for 22 years. Their highest closing months every year, their highest closing months is November and December. Every year. Melinda Elmer, who's the number two agent in the company, January and December are her two highest closing months every year. Because they know the timing in our business, the timing is when no one else is doing the day-to-day -day stuff. That's when you go big. Okay. See, most people take their December or their, their vacations during Christmas. I would argue take your vacations during summer. You know, there's a million real estate agents in your town. Okay, so it's all about timing and the, the type of industry you're in. Do the right thing at the right time. Run number three, they have a higher risk tolerance. They have a higher risk tolerance. They have a higher risk tolerance. Millionaires understand the challenges, go after them with urgency and bet on themselves. Millionaires understand the challenges, go after them with urgency and bet on themselves. So let me ask you this. Is it easy? Let's be honest here. Don't, don't, sit, don't, don't say an answer that you think I want to hear. Is it easy to make a million dollars? No. No, it's really effing hard to make a million dollars. See, working on my language. <laughs> it's really effing hard to make a million dollars. That's why not many people make a million dollars. It's really hard. In general, in real estate, it's even harder to make a million dollars. There's a lot of challenges that come after you. Okay. I mean, there's always challenges in real estate. There's interest rate challenges. There's inventory challenges. There's pandemic challenges. There's global economic challenges sometimes. And then there's challenges because people don't think we have a real job. So they distract us. There's challenges because other real estate agents are lazy. So they distract us. We're constantly dealing with challenges. That's part of the gig. But you understand the challenges. You understand what you have to do. And then you go after your goals with urgency. Urgency. So what do you think is one thing in terms of real estate in terms of very important to closing more deals that you should have a higher urgency on? There's multiple answers, but there's one specific answer I really am looking for that you should have high, high urgency that in this particular area, I have to have high, high urgency. And I was getting the first deals. week, I was getting people that were saying 750 and now they're kind of. It's a good point, but not what I was looking for. Prospecting. Prospecting. You prospecting, prospecting sure, but what what yeah, what the, about the, prospecting? Lead follow up. Lead follow up. Lead That's follow -up. the answer I'm looking for. Lead follow up. High urgency on lead follow up. I have a lead. I gotta go get it. I have to have highest urgency because if prospecting is okay, fine, but prospecting is to get leads. If I don't have urgency on lead follow up, then all my prospecting is useless. <laughs> Right? Right or wrong? It's useless. Yes. And if I don't do urgency on lead follow-up, then I can't convert that lead to what? An actual appointment. An actual appointment. And what is Neil Schwartz going in his quote book? No appointments equals what? No money. No money. <laughs> so if there's one, thank you, Joey. So if there's one no, thing. No dough, no bread. No dough, no bread. There you go. If there's one thing to say urgency, I got to have urgency on is my lead follow-up. We're not incubating leads. We're not, oh, I don't want to bother them. No, no, no. I got to leave them. Go and get it. Okay? High urgency. And then the other part of that was they bet on themselves. You have to bet on yourself. Because in real estate, the mass population does no business. So if you're 
waiting for the industry to bet on you. The industry is betting on you failing, actually. The real estate industry is betting on you failing because 80% of people with an active real estate license will never close more than three deals a year. 50% of people with an active real estate license will never close a deal in general. They say the average time frame when somebody gets their real estate license, the average time frame from the time they get their license to the time they go get another job is six months. Yeah. The industry is betting on you failing. You have to bet on yourself to say no freaking way, not me. Not me. I'm not one of those people. I'm not a real estate statistic. I'm a real estate superstar. I'm not going to be one of the 50% that never close a deal. I'm not going to be one of the people that has to get a job in six months. I'm not going to be one of the 80% that only close three. I'm going to be one of the top 20 that close four, five, six, 10, 15, 20, whatever. But you have to bet on yourself because the industry is not doing that. I'm now, now internally, I'm betting on you. Neil's betting on you. Randy, Keith, Matt, everyone's betting on you. Internally, we're betting on you but the industry is not. So you have to bet on yourself. Okay. Number four, millionaires leverage quickly. Millionaires leverage quickly. The wealthiest people leverage out of their job where they can get a paycheck. Millionaires leverage quickly quickly, the wealthiest people leverage out of their job where they can get a paycheck, where they can work on their own business. So give me an example of some of leverage when that you have something and you can leverage. I have something that I can leverage for more business. Give me an example. Listings. A listing. Write this down. Every listing should generate one more deal, whether it's another listing or a buyer. If you get a listing and all you do is sell that listing and walk away from it with nothing else, then you simply did not leverage that listing the way it should be. Every Unless you don't want to work that area. Sometimes we take listings with past clients, referrals and stuff like that. And you're like, I really don't want to work that area because so I'm not going to actually do anything. All right, I get it. But every listing should generate another deal. I mean, you have just listed calls. You could do open houses. You have sign calls. You have online marketing. You have all kinds of different things you could do. You should be promoting the hell out of your listings to your database. Every listing should generate another deal, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Okay. They, so that's a perfect so they example. Leverage, they, said they leverage quickly the wealthiest people. Leverage out of their job where they can get a paycheck. I don't really like the way that's worded, but let's just read it as it is. The wealthiest leverage out of their job where they can get a paycheck, meaning that they focus on leveraging things that get them a paycheck. So let me give you an example of the opposite. I'm leveraging, uh, I, I've got six likes on this Instagram post and normally I only get two. I'm gonna leverage this post to see if I can get to 10. You know, it's like, okay, well, you're leveraging this post to try to get a few more likes, but it's not really making a difference, okay? It's not leveraging you to become an influencer or master or anything like that. You know, I'm leveraging this to do that. It's like, it's what Joey said. It's, I have a listing. I should leverage this for a deal or a closing, buyer or listing closed, you know, things along those lines. I have a bunch of stuff in escrow. Imagine calling people in your database. Now, this is the truth. I, and I talk about this on coaching calls all the time. And this is not, I'm not, this is not singling anybody out. I'm saying this to a group because it's all of us, present company included. Are there people in your database, past clients, past, well, not centers of influence, but are not past clients, but centers of influence. Are there people that you know that don't know you're in real estate? Yes or no? Yeah. 100%. 100%. Are there people that know you're in real estate, but don't know if you're any good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if even the people that know you're in real estate, they're not sure if you're any good. So it's like, well, I don't want to put my name on a referral to them and then they do a crappy job. 
And it's mm-hmm. not a personal thing. They might like personally, they might think you're wonderful, but they're like, I don't, I don't know if I want to refer you business. I, my sisters did it to me. I don't want to lose my friendship. <laughs> well, that might be personal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but imagine you have. They, two, don't, they didn't want to lose their friendship just in case I'm not good. I'm telling you, it's a real thing. So, in, you have to constantly remind your database that you're good at your job. So when you have an escrow, you need to call them and let them know that you have an escrow where you have a list, you have a sold. And if you have multiple escrows, two, three, four escrows, oh my gosh, that's an amazing call to make. Hey, John, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. You know, hey, I'm just reaching out to you. I got four deals in escrow right now. I'm I'm helping a lot of people buy or sell real estate. A lot of opportunities out there. Who do you know that I can help? All of a sudden they're like, holy crap, Robert's got four deals in escrow. This is the guy. Now I'm no longer concerned about referring Robert business because now I have that confidence. Does that make sense? And leverage, leverage stuff that's going to help you get another paycheck. Number five, they live by long-term thinking, but take immediate action. They live by long-term thinking, but take immediate action. They live by long-term thinking, but take immediate action. So this is kind of what we talked about earlier, right? You have to think big. You have to think long term, okay? Five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 15, 20 years down the road, right? You have to have long term thinking, but you need to take action today because what you do today affects 10 years from now, affects five years from now, affects one year from now, okay? But it's constantly long term thinking. What's the end goal? If you're just trying to think, if all you're thinking about is the goal today and you're never thinking about the end goal, you never really know where you end up. You you don't really have anything to track and then you don't have anything exciting and eventually you lead to something called burnout. If you're not thinking long-term, if you're not thinking about the five-year goal, the 10-year goal, and all you're thinking about the daily goal I mean, how many days can you, if all you're thinking about is today, I'm going to work today because I got to get a lead, I got to get an appointment, and you have no thinking of the five or 10 year goal and you're getting rejected 30, 40, 50 times a day. If you have no vision of the long term goal, how many days can you do that before you're just done? You know what I mean? You'll just burn yourself out. So you have to always think about the long term. I made 40 contacts today. I got no leads, no appointments. I got cursed out three times. Okay, I got hung up on six times. God, what a terrible day. Anyone ever have that day? (laughs) Robert, were you listening to my calls this morning? Uh, You know? So if you're only thinking about the short term day, you're going to go home depressed. You're going to have to call an 800 number. <laughs> Keep yourself jumping off the bridge. But if you know that, hey, this is part of the gig. I'm doing this for 10 years from now, five years from now, and this is all going to pay off. Then it's you'll make it through. Okay. All right. Number six. I mentioned this earlier, but we'll write this down now again. Number six, they adapt quickly. They adapt quickly. Mike writes down, it's what we've talked about for years, versatility. They adapt quickly. It's what we've talked about for years, versatility. I tend not to be very egotistical, okay? It's really, sometimes though, the real estate industry makes it very hard for me to not be egotistical, okay? And here's what I mean. The market, as in general, changed probably about six, seven months ago, right? Interest rates went up, things along those lines. How long have myself and Neil been talking about scripts and things like that about changing markets? A year we started talking about this because we saw that it was going to happen in a few months. Right. So we wrote scripts. We started talking about it. We started doing things. Mike talked about it. You were, you know, for those of you that um, aren't with the company, you know, you, your brokers might have talked about it. OK, your coaches, things like that. But we we saw it coming. And now I just <laughs> I got an email today about someone join my join a, my training class tomorrow 
about we're going to talk about how the market has changed and what you should do. Dude, you're late. <laughs> you're late. What are you talking about? Well, why are you doing that now? It's over. It's already changed. We're already talking about moving on to the next one. Your database is gone. I took it happily. <laughs> it's over. Okay. But this is part of the gig. You have millionaires have to adapt quickly. You can't, you can't be reactive. You have to be proactive. You have to look at the trends. You have to see what's happening in the marketplace. And you have to be ready to do those types of things. I mean, I see listings sitting on the market for like 100 days. And the reason they're sitting on the market for 100 days is because the agent can't figure out how to price a property today. Well, yeah, I think we could sell it for that. How? <laughs> what? This is not 2020 anymore. But for those of you that adapt quickly, you can have that conversation with a seller and say, hey, look, if you want to get this home sold in the next three months, this is where we need to price it. And here's why. Then you can get a listing to get it sold as opposed to having it expire, having it sit on the market. You have to be able to adapt quickly. I mean, gosh, we heard the news about the interest rates rising to 6%. We got you a new script that day. Nobody moved. We got a new script. <laughs> interest rates just hit 6%. The iBuyer, right? The iBuyer, Zillow shut down its iBuyer program about a year ago now. We put together a script, even out, emailed it out to the company that morning. Anyone who comes across this, there you go. You have to be able to adapt quickly, okay? You got to be on your feet, on your toes, knows what, know what's going on, all right? That's just part of the gig, part of the gig. All right, we're going to get through a few more here. I wrote down here, number seven, they are not afraid of doing whatever it takes to make their business work. They are not afraid of doing whatever it takes to make their business work. They are not afraid of doing whatever it takes to make their business work. When they commit to doing something, they are serious and mean it. When they commit to doing something, they are serious and mean it. So give me an example of something when it says they're not afraid of doing whatever it takes to make their business work. Give me an example of something that you don't really like to do. But you do it because you know you need to do it to make your business work. And don't just say prospecting. Give me an example, because I know that was everyone's answer. Door knocking. Door knocking. I knew that was going to be, I knew that was going to be an answer. Thank you, Denora. Door knocking. I'll be honest. I don't like it either. I don't actively sell anymore, but I don't like, I didn't like door knocking. People, you want to go door? Not really. And which is funny because I'm kind of a face-to-face -face person. I just, I didn't do it. I didn't, I was uncomfortable doing it. But if it works for you, you have to do it. Give me another example. Give me another example of something that you don't really like doing, but you do it anyways because you know it's going to help your business. Phone prospect. Phone prospecting. And Maricela, because I know Maricela, Maricela likes being on the door. She's the exact opposite. She would rather be on the doors, but sometimes in Southern California, it gets to like 145 degrees. So you, know, <laughs> you got to get on the phone sometimes, right? Or it might rain, you know, three days a year. And, you know, you got to get on the phone sometimes. You Price know? reduction. Price reduction. Yeah, there you go. Nobody wants to have that conversation. No. But you know, hey, I can either rip the Band-Aid off and get a price reduction conversation so this sells, or I can keep just sitting here not selling. And the longer it goes, does the seller get happier? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I can rip the Band-Aid off and have a price reduction conversation, even though I hate it, and get this sold. Or I can sit here, get nothing, and the seller's anger goes from here to here to here, making that conversation eventually harder. Duke put in their role play. Yeah, role play. You know, God, this is stupid. You know, okay, yeah, I'm reading the script. Great, great, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reading the script. You know, it's not exciting. It, you know, it's not, it's not, it's hard to get the adrenaline going, but you got to do it. All the other professions do it. I mean, do you think LeBron James goes, oh, good, another day of practice? You know? But he, but he's like, I got to do it. I got to work on the jumper. I got a game tomorrow. You know? Kobe, 
Kobe used to practice just the basics every day for an just, hour. There you go. Just the basics. And it worked out okay for him. Good, 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 good. So that, look, you, you got to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, even if you don't like it, right? Whether it be door knocking, phone prospecting, price reduction, role playing, calling certain sources, you know? I mean, I, I run into this all the time. Gosh, Robert, I just do not want to call my database. I don't want to call my database. Okay. Calling your past clients that you haven't spoken to in over five years. Yeah. That's a, there you go. But people don't want to do it. It's like, okay, great. Well, then you're making life harder. It's not that you can't build a business by calling outside your database. But if I went around the room and I started asking everybody, what's the, what's the highest source of income? Most of you are going to say what? database database so if you don't want to call your database you're just making your life that much harder okay so uh you got to just do whatever it takes all right all right we'll go through two more and then we'll do this again is this helpful is this anybody like this is this good yes all right so we'll do two more and then we'll do this again we'll do this again next week okay so we'll, we'll that way we can finish this off all right number eight they often partner with others who have the same attitudes. They often partner with others who have the same attitudes. They often partner with others who have the same attitudes. Then he wrote down here, they understand they can go further for much longer when they spend time with people like themselves. They understand they can go further for much longer when they spend time with people like themselves. I would write down at the very end of that, they understand they can go further for much longer when they st spend time with people like themselves at their best. Because let's, let's be honest, sometimes do you have moments where you don't feel very confident in yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you have moments where you don't feel like you're you're, you're up to the standards of some of the other agents in your area, mm -hmm. present company included. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you're feeling that way and you surround yourself with people that feel the same way, well, that's not going to work out. So I would say is you have to surround yourself with people like you at your best. At my best, I'm this. So I need to surround myself with people like this today or this month or sometimes this year, I feel really crappy. Well, if I, if I surround myself with other people that feel really crappy, we're never going to get any better. No. Okay. So at your best, but you really need to surround yourself with the right people that have the same type of attitude. This is the most difficult part of real estate, without a doubt, is spending time with people that have the same attitude as you. For the simple fact is you're rare. OK, I mean, whoever you follow, we tend to follow. We're very heavy in the Mike Ferry organization. Some of you might not like him. That's OK. You might like Brian Buffini. You might like Tom Ferry. You might not like any of these people. That's all OK. But let's just use Mike Ferry for this for this example. Right. Mike Ferry is only liked By about, I don't know half a percent of the real estate population, <laughs> okay? He doesn't have, you know, there's 1.6 million active real estate licenses. He doesn't have 1.6 fans. He he has, he's not popular. He's not very popular, okay? Mm -hmm. But what he does is, but when you're in that community, you feel like I'm surrounding myself with people that are the same attitude as me. And so I found this little culture. I found this little group that's like me. And that's what people thrive in. That's why people thrive in his organization. Is it's like this little community that people like. You Can have I to give an example of that. Yes, please. It's a personal, actually. Exactly a month ago, right in the middle of my company trip, I, I get a call from the neighbor saying that my um, ex-father-in-law, 91 year old ex-father-in-law that I take care of fell down and broke his hip and he's on his way to the hospital. 
And I spent the first 10 days, because he doesn't speak English or French or any other language but Persian, in the hospital with him next to his bedside on the chair. Wow. And if it wasn't for this, my I couldn't I couldn't like physically go to work. Like I had to be there. But during that 10 days, the amount of my own coach from Mike Ferry, my mastermind people, the, the community, the people that I usually reach out to, accountability partners, role play partners, they did not let me off the hook in a sense. Yeah, we understand you're tired. We understand you have no control. He's in the hospital. But while he's asleep, what are you doing? Are you sleeping too? No, because I'm in a chair. So maybe you can make phone calls. Where do you want me to make phone calls? Well, you don't need to call an expired, but you could call database people. And I took three listings during that 10 days. Wow. From database. And that's because, as you said, those people did not go, oh, my God, we understand. Just stay there. I just, you know, it's, it's okay. They just said, okay, there's certain things you have no control on, but you need to get your ass because guess what? You have extra expenses coming up and you don't have the money. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that's what it takes. It does. Honestly, guys, yeah. like just surround yourself with people like that. <laughs> and I want you to know that exact story is why he doesn't have a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. Because most people hear that story and go like, well, gosh, you know, where's the sympathy? Where's this? Where's that? And if you're that way, that's okay. Everyone's got their own blend. But for some people, it's I'm this type of minded. I need to surround myself to the top's point that that type of people that say, hey, look, yeah, things are tough, but you could still make some positive things out of it. I had a I was well, we where's were the sympathy when I wouldn't have money. Yeah, well, in a, so, in a month now. <laughs> so we were at a, I'll share this story that goes to Matov's point and then we'll, we'll wrap up with one more point. We were at coaches training, I don't know, I forget, five, six years ago or so. And uh, coaches training is where all the Mike Ferry coaches twice a year get together and Mike does a coaching the coaches type of thing. And uh, they were talking about, and he's like, okay, give me some examples. What are some, you know, issues that maybe you couldn't overcome? And someone had mentioned, you know, someone's um, spouse had, uh, was sick and, you know, that was why they weren't working and things like that. And, and Mike said, well, how'd you handle it? And then and the coach said, well, look, I mean, obviously, you know, very sympathetic at first and, you know, things like that. But I, I ran into the point of, you know, I, I don't really know what to say from a coaching standpoint anymore because it's like, do I push them? Do I not push them? Things like that. They're going through some stuff. And Mike, Mike said, does anyone have a suggestion? And Kathy Anderson raised her hand, one of the Mike Fair coaches, great, great coach. And she said, well, I ran into that a few years ago. And what I, and what, um, I told the agent after a few months, I said, does not making any money make the problem easier or better or make the problem easier or harder? And she said, well, not making any money is making this problem a lot harder. And she said, well, why don't we get back to at least doing the basics so we could make a little bit of money to at least make this process as easy as it can be? Mm -hmm. And that was the that was the conversation. And that was when the agent was like, you know what, you're right. And it was it was a sympathetic thing for for a while because you're going through some real stuff. But it was OK, at some point we need to have a conversation of. You gotta, you now have to move from being sympathetic to being, you really have to step it up because you have to provide now that you're in this particular case, their spouse was sick and could not work and they got kids and things like that. And sometimes you need that conversation. Again, for some people, that's too much and, and that's, and that's okay. The point of this whole conversation, this point is that you need to find your people that have the same attitude as you, because if you find that attitude, if you find people like Matab says, it's going to push you to do more. But if you're the opposite of that and you surround yourself with people that are like, well, is this going to make the problem easier or harder? Then you're going to just, you're going to shrink. And you need to be around people that are maybe a little more sympathetic and come at it from a different way. And both can be fine. There's not one way to fix all. You just got to figure out what's right for you and be honest with yourself about that. Because there are millionaires, to Mike's point, 
there are millionaires that are very hardcore, that type of mentality. And then there's the Richard Bransons of the world that don't wear ties. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got to find, as I heard Tim Fair say one time, you got to find your tribe, right? But if, if you find people with the same attitude as you, you can go longer for more. All right, we'll do one more point and we'll wrap up. This is number nine. They understand the importance of health and relationships. They understand the importance of health and relationships. And what I wrote down beneath that, something that this is one of those exact moments, and this is why we're ending on this one, because I wanted to just keep this kind of theme going and not have to revisit this theme when we do this next week. This is one of those moments where I kind of get a little more accountable with people and sometimes they like it and sometimes they don't. And here's what I mean by that, the importance of health and relationships. I don't think you can be a slob at home and be a professional at work. I I don't think you can have no value for yourself personally and have value for yourself professionally. I think, I, I just don't, I don't think you can do that at a high level. So if you don't take care of it, now, look at, I'm not telling everyone to go be, you know, Miss, Mrs. and Mr. America's. Okay. I will never ever in the history of my life have six pack abs because I will never ever in the history of my life, give up lasagna or M&Ms ever. (laughs) 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 Ever. Will I give up either of those two things ever. Okay. The doctor says, dude, lasagna has a secret ingredient in it and it's going to kill you. I'm like, it's been a good run, right? Like, okay, so I'm going to always stay in shape, but I'm never going to be six pack shredded type guy. My point is, is that you have to at least maintain some sort of health. You have to take care of yourself physically. You have to take care of yourself mentally, okay? Outside of work, because you can't be no good outside of work and be good inside of work. It just doesn't work. Okay. At a high level. So you have to really take a look at yourself, at your health and your personal relationships and figure out, I got to get these under control. If I'm going to get that under control, let me, and I'll leave you with this. Does your personal life affect your professional life? Yes or no? Yes. 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 It's me. And vice versa. And the story I always tell is this. I got my first real sales job when I was 20 years old, okay, doing home loans. And the very first day, my boss says, all right, Robert, when you come in here, out there doesn't matter. Okay, that's out there. This is here. I said, wow, what a concept. So if I don't make any money in here, my wife can't get mad at me out there. This is wonderful, honey. I know we don't have any money, but that's an in there problem. You think my wife was going for that? I, if if no, your wife was going for that, no she's a keeper. Way. <laughs> no way. They interlock. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to take care of yourself health-wise, relationship-wise, outside of work. All right, good stuff. All right, I'm seven minutes over. We call that the expressive tax. All right, so apologize for that, but hopefully we got something out of this. We got through nine points. We're, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to put this on the calendar for Monday next week. We'll we'll go through this list as well. I think there's some good stuff in here. Hopefully you're getting something out of it. This was great. Thank you. All right. Thanks for participating. I greatly appreciate it. All right, everybody. We still have some.